Hello guys, it's Project Study Buddies. In this video, we are going to go through classification of living organisms. And before we begin, remember, any question, feel free to leave a comment down below or join us at Discord. We will be happy to assist you. So let's begin with things we already know. We humans are animals. We belong to one of the five kingdoms in the taxonomy or classification system along with plant, fungi, protoctus, bacteria or prokaryote and obviously we are living organisms. But do you know why are we considered or how do we define living things? Is it just because we eat and we move? Together with plants, box, some microorganisms, we are all living things because we have these seven characteristics. We move to change location, respire to break down nutrients and release energy for metabolism. We are sensitive so we could detect and respond to changes in the internal or external environment. Growth, growth as in our cell size and our cell number increase permanently. Reproduce sexually or asexually. Excretion to remove the waste product of metabolism. And nutrition to obtain food for energy and substances for cell growth and cell repair. Wait, here I mentioned some microorganisms. So what are the some that are non-living? When we go back to the previous slide, you'll see viruses are nowhere to be found in the five kingdoms. Not even higher up until the top of hierarchy, the three domains until which we'll mention later, and here's why. Viruses have no cellular structure like those of bacteria or fungi. So if viruses are not cells, what are they? They are parasites, they can't survive on their own, so when free in the environment, they are just infectious but cannot carry out metabolism on their own. That means COVID cannot survive without us, the host. That's why social distancing guys, they die if they can't get into our body. Anyways, so how do we classify viruses then, since there are so many viruses out there, like Ebola, Corona, HIV? While the taxonomy system for its classification is based on the disease which they cause, type of nucleic acid they contain, whether it's DNA or RNA, and if RNA is a single double stranded. If you have not learned or are not going to learn about RNA in your syllabus, don't worry, just like DNA is double stranded, RNA is usually single stranded, but in viruses, it can be double or single stranded. Okay, so done with viruses. Now, what about the other kingdoms? The domain, the whole hierarchy? Let's look at the whole picture then. This is the phylogenetic tree, also known as the evolutionary tree or tree of life, which shows the evolutionary relationships among various species based upon their similarities and differences in their physical or genetic traits. I forgot to mention the full terms here, but don't worry, I'll show them in a bit and you don't have to search for it now. Just know that for now, note that D is domain and is at the top of the hierarchy. There are two domains, first prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, eukaryotes. They are distinct features. Prokaryotes, they have no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, chloroplasts. And eukaryotes, including us, are the opposite. We have nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. I've written wrongly for the sign in front of the N for nucleus is supposedly cross for prokaryotes and tick for eukaryotes. In the 1970s, scientists discovered that there were prokaryotes living in extreme environments like volcanic vents in the oceans, so extreme temperature and salt concentration. They were unlike typical bacteria. Let's call these weird prokaryotes extremophiles. 
So they also found that these extremal files, they share features with typical bacteria and even eukaryotes. So in order to show the differences between them and typical bacteria, they came up with a new domain called archaea. Archaea superficially are more similar to bacteria, but in fact, they are actually more in common with eukarya than with bacteria. Down the hierarchy, kingdom. There are five kingdoms, four are all eukaryotes under eukarya. Oh, eukarya is the third domain for eukaryotes. So we have three domains in the system, bacteria, archaea, both originally are one domain but now divided, and eukarya. And bacteria or prokaryotes are six, six kingdoms if you want to be specific, eubacteria from domain bacteria and archaea bacteria from domain archaea. In this video, we are going to focus on the animal kingdom. Domain, Kingdom, Phylum, Plural Phyla, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species. We humans are under Domain Eukarya, Kingdom Animal, Phylum Chordata, Class Mammals, Order Primates, Family, Hominidae, Genus Homo, Species Sapiens. Homo Sapiens, our scientific name, Homo, Latin word that means human or man, and sapiens means wise. Interestingly, all species have a scientific name, a two-term name given by scientists using the binomial, binomial nomenclature. So we humans are given the two names, Homo sapiens. There are three rules to keep in mind, always underline only the names or italicized. I recommend just underline so that it's clear. And the first letter of the genus has to be capitalized and never capitalize the first letter of the species. A dichotomous key is a tool to help determine the identity of the organisms based on their traits, whether do they have fur, feather, etc. This is one example, feel free to post to have a look at it. And this is also another example of question presented in another format. Now, the animal kingdom. Animal kingdom is a kingdom and it has many phyla under it. Chordate is one of it. Under the chordate phyla, there are five classes. All of them differ in terms of features and traits. Fish, amphibians like frogs, reptiles like snakes, turtles, birds, Mammals like Earths, Cats and Dogs. I specifically mentioned vertebrates because there are also invertebrates under the phylum chordate. But I'm not sure whether chordate is in the syllabus because different exam boards have different syllabus. But I'm kind of sure that you need to know what's vertebrate, animals with backbone, and the five classes. In this video, we are only going to go through the outline and exa examples of animals, so that is not too much info to take in for you. If you hope to see videos on their features, feel free to comment or tell us at Discord. Back to the topic. And let's look at the other phyla in the next slide. It's gonna be all invertebrates, meaning animals without backbone. We have the phylum arthropods, and we need to know the four classes under it. Crustaceans, the crabs on the beach, myriapods, the centipedes, millipedes, insects, butterflies, bees, arachnids, scorpions, nematodes, Wormworm, annelids, segmented worms like earthworms, leeches, mollusks, the second phylum of invertebrate, second largest phylum of invertebrate animals after after arthropods, for example, snails, octopus, oysters, scallops, etc. 
And we also have tardigrade, which I'm pretty sure wouldn't be in our high school syllabus, I guess. It's aka the water bear. This little creature is quite popular in science fiction movies like Star Trek, Ant-Man, and is said to be the strongest animal in the world. If you're interested, you can look up. Alright, some vocab that you might come across in the chapter. General idea of classification. And remember, vertebrates are animals with backbone, and invertebrates are animals without backbone. Backbone, aka vertebral column. Thank you for watching. Hope this helped. If you have any question regarding the video, suggestion, request, or more details on topics, you are always welcome to comment down below, or we are always available on Discord. Bye!